Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about robotic arms for prosthetics. <coughs> so, so far we had discussed about uh, how exactly our particular human organs are working. So, we started with the brain. We discussed about how brain works as CPU. And then we discussed about the architecture of the brain, how exactly the architecture of the brain looks like and we compared with it CPU right then also we discussed about the signal processing how exactly the signal processing is happening inside the brain okay so with this and also we discussed about a okay, few one more topic so today we are going to discuss about our robotic arms for prosthetics so what do you mean by prosthetics those who are bi from biological background will be knowing what is prosthetics <clears throat> but others you might have seen some of the people who are not having access to the particular uh, sport devices they will usually go for uh, uh, for example some of the uh, you know in, in in some of the sports you might have you might have witnessed that the person who is not having the leg is going uh, is having uh, is, is having a artificial leg or you can call it as a prosthetic understanding so that means it is made up of that leg is made up of some metal okay some metal in the sense uh, it can be the you know most of the times it will be the titanium or any other materials it will be used to make a, like a shape of the leg okay so even uh, you might have witnessed this thing for uh, even uh, robotic arms and all right with the, for arms those who are not having arms or legs usually we go for uh, you know prosthetics prosthetics uh, we use it as artificial legs or hands most widely used in these part two particular applications so specifically if you want to see what is prosthetic it's nothing but something which is artificial to replace the the actual thing it can be the leg or hand or any other part of the body okay so now you i hope you understood what is prosthetics so prosthetics andre enappa andre enadru extra part nam artificial agi nam maadi nam yavadadru the body part illade hodaga athwa accidentally adanna kalkondaga nam adanna fix martivalla ond artificial idanna so adanna nam prosthetic anta karithevi so what is the what are the speciality of this particular prosthetics prosthetic uh, must sh should adapt to the particular human being or uh, it should not have any adverse effects on the human being it should be biocompatible so that that particular uh, uh, whatever whenever there is an amputation or whenever there is because of the accident or whatever it is it, it if the leg has to be removed or if the hand has to be removed in particular diseases so then we need to use prosthetics so that the particular movement should be there as if my uh, my brain uh, if uh, imagine i am having a prosthetics then if my brain asks me to run then it should be able to adjust to that particular thing all the signals should be received uh, to that particular by the prosthetic uh, device and it should start functioning as a normal leg so that's how that's why we are calling it as a prosthetics understood so now in this topic we are going to discuss about robotic arms for prosthetics so let's start so robotic arms for prosthetics are advanced prosthetic devices okay so they are not uh, just a normal device what we use it for uh, normal uh, engineering applications but here usually they usually will have very advanced prosthetic uh, devices that means they are made up of you know highly engineered technology you know is involved and highly engineered materials are involved okay so that's why it is uh, it is called it as a you know it has been used for uh, you know prosthetics are nothing but advanced uh, prosthetic devices that use robotic technology so when you are talking about the robotic arms it has to use the advanced prosthetic devices because it should ha it should act like a particular robot itself so that use a robotic technology to restore the functionality that means to restore the function of the arm here that means it should act as a normal arm normal arm of a human being so uh, to restore the functionality of the 
uh, functionality to individuals that means the patients with upper limb amputation that means upper limb amputation because you are talking about the arms so understood so robotic arms for the prosthetics are nothing but advanced prosthetic devices that use the robotic technology obviously since it is a robotic arm it has to use the robotic technology for what purpose to restore the functionality of to to the individuals with upper limb amputation where amputations are nothing but what when the particular part of the body is cut for example here in this case arm has been cut so so your upper limb amputation so that's how we can use so these devices typically use motors actuators and sensors this is not just one material it's a composition of all different materials the motors are involved for the movement purposes for direction purposes and actuators are involved because whenever there is a signal has been given the movement should be there for that we need actuators and sensors sensors obviously to sense the particular thing right if you want to hold something then your brain should receive the signal that the arm is is holding right even if you are uh, if they were open eyes you can say but with the closed eyes if you want to sense a particular thing you should have sensors in that particular prosthetics so these are composed of what motors actuators and sensors these are the major three uh, you know components of, of this particular uh, devices okay so why we need all these motors actuators and sensor to mimic the movement of the human arm and hand why because our arm or a hand it works it has got you know particular motors motors in the sense here what we were the devices and the muscles will act as a motors whereas actuators will again the muscles will act as actuation will be their contraction and relaxation okay so that was done by the actuators and our skin so that skin is taking up the particular this thing whatever sensing so that's why we need sensors to mimic the movement of the human arm and hand so allowing the wearer to perform the task such as reaching grasping and manipulating the objects you can reach and grasp a particular thing you can hold particular thing and you can manipulate the objects so here these are the functions of the robotic arms which will act should act as a normal arm that is reaching grasping and manipulating the objects so i hope you understood so let's i'll just explain uh, briefly in kannada language so robotic arms and reena pa andre idu prosthetics anta explain madidnalla aa prosthetics e use agirutte idralli robotic arms alli but idu robotic arms alli advanced prosthetic devices anna use madirthevi yavudakke use madtivi to restore the functionality of individual yake andre ika for example namge hand illa andre adardu function hand id function eno adanna ಲೆಗ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಲೆಗ್ ಲೆಗ್ ಇದು ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಅದೇನು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಸಹ ಅದೇ ಥರ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಆ ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನು ನಾವು ವಾಪಸ್ ಪಡೆಯಲಿಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಾವು ಇದನ್ನು ರೋಬೋಟಿಕ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ ಅನ್ನು ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಸೊ ರೋಬೋಟಿಕ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮೂರು ವಿಧಗಳು ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಮೂರು ಕಾಂಪೋನೆಂಟ್ಗಳಿರುತ್ತೆ ಯಾವುದೆಲ್ಲ ಅಂದರೆ ಮೋಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುವೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಮೋಟರ್ಸ್ ಏನಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ಗೆ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಚೇಂಜು ಅದು ಇದಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲ ಆಕ್ಚುವೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಹೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗು ರಿಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ರಿಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಲೈಕ್ ಮಸಲ್ ಥರ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ನಮಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ಹೇಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಏನಾದರೂ ಟಚ್ ಮಾಡಿದ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಸೊ ಆ ಥರ ಸೆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ಈ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ಲಿ ಸಹ ಸೊ ಸೊ ಈ ಮೂರು ಇರಬೇಕು ಯಾವುದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಮಿಮಿಕ್ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾಪಿ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ನನ್ನ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ ಸೊ ಇದರಿಂದ ಇದು ಅಚೀವ್ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಾವು ಏನನ್ನು ಇದು ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಯಾವುದೆಲ್ಲ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಅಂದರೆ ರೀಚಿಂಗ್ ನಾವು ಈಗ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಏನಾದರೂ ಹಿಡ್ಕೊ ಹಿಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೂ ನಾವು ಮೂಮೆಂಟನ್ನು ರೀಚ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ನಮ್ಮ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡನ್ನು ರೀಚ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತು ಗ್ರಾಸ್ಪಿಂಗ್ ಏನಾದರೂ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಸೊ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಪ್ಯುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಥವಾ ನಾವು ಏನಾದರೂ ಈ ಈ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟನ್ನು ತೆಗೆದು ಈ ಫೋನನ್ನು ತೆಗೆದು ಆ ಕಡೆ ಇಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಅಥವಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ತೆಗೆದು ಈ ಕಡೆ ಇಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಆ ಥರ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಿದ ಕೆಲಸ ಏನಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಷ್ಟೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ರೋಬೋಟಿಕ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರೊಸ್ತೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಆಫ್ ವೇಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಮೇಜರ್ಲಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ವೇಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಮಸಲ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಮಯೋ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಮಸಲ್ 
or placed on the sca scarf here okay like eeg what we discussed in the previous topic to detect and interpret the brain activity so whatever the brain is telling the uh, machine has to do that is the robot has to do that's why we need brain machine interface okay so some prosthetic arms also incorporate machine learning uh, algorithms nowadays the ai ml is coming in so machine learning algorithms plays a very important role in the in this particular research uh, okay to improve their performance and adapt to the user's needs over time so first thing we will discuss that was what direct control through muscle signals also called a myoelectric control why it is myo because muscles are involved so myoelectric control of the robotic arm prosthetic involves using electrical signals generated by the various remaining muscles to control the movement of the prosthetic so imagine uh, uh, the particular person's hand is cut now half of these muscles are still there so now these muscles has to work right they are still functional they are not completely uh, you know what you say uh, gone they are still functional we are taking the help of these remaining muscles to control the movement of the prosthetic understanding illi namdu hand enadru cut agide andre obba person idu a hand id ella muscle galu haalagiralla a uldiro muscle galu function irutte a function anna use maadkondu now ee prosthetic anna movement maadabodu adakke now direct control through muscle signal that's why we are calling it as a direct control to muscle signal because the remaining muscles with their help we are connecting it to the prosthetic so that the movement with the muscles will directly will uh, shift to the prosthetic okay so no, there in that brain machine interface is not required so that's why it is called as direct control through muscle signals so muscle is already getting the signal from the brain and you are just attaching the particular prosthetics so the movement will be there accordingly so the another system typically involves electrodes which is placed on the skin over a remaining muscle that are used to detect and interpret the electrical signal generated by the muscle contraction so here since it is based on the muscle so whatever the electrodes are there no no need to put on brain because there is no brain uh, elect uh, machine interface is required so whatever the electrodes are there that will be kept on just over a skin for imagine half of the your uh, half of the person's uh, uh, hand has uh, been cut or uh, amputated so that half of this thing there you can keep this particular electrode so that the, the electrodes will sense the signals which is generated by the muscles understanding or which is taken from the brain to the muscles now the muscles movement is there based on the muscle movement the particular remaining uh, the particular remaining muscle movement is there particular uh, the prosthetic will uh, work or move based on the muscle contractions so this is exactly how it looks like so you have actuators here okay you have a remaining muscle here so that when there is a signal from the muscle that means this muscle contracts so the actuator movement will be there because of this movement this control signal will be there computer interface will be there emg will be there so that uh, the movement of the particular leg will be done so that this leg only this half this particular leg is amputated imagine like that so now whatever the movement is there here this movement will be sensed by the actuator and the leg will move like that feet will move accordingly understanding so the imagine this is a leg this is a feet feet is amputated so here is where we are introducing the robotic uh, what to say the particular uh, device so that the uh, the particular movement in this particular skin till here the electrode will be kept no so that will be, movement will take you for the other movement that's why it is called as direct because it is directly we are taking from the muscle myolytic electric that means we are taking the signal from the myo that is tissue okay so that's why we are going from that for the moment that's why it is called as myoelectric control of an ankle exoskeleton example okay understood that's how about a direct that's what about direct this thing illi enappa enappa agutte andre in electrodes now place martive el place martive already cut agirathalla alli muscles gade active irathalla adu contraction aagta irathe alli varugu brain is signal bartta irathe so adli now electrodes anna haaktivi aa electrodes alli signal anna ee tagondu so ee tara illi irathalla so idu illi iruva yavadala extra haakirthivalla aa amputated part agi adu kodutte aa signal anna the receive maadkondu ade tara movement agutte illi yav tara movement beku aa tara brain signal kottirathe ade tara movement illi agutte so adakke idanna direct myoelectric uh, muscle signals anta helthivi 
ओके ना नेट वॉज नेक्स्ट दैट्स इट नेक्स्ट रोबोटिक आर्म्स प्रोस्थेटिक बाय ब्रेन मशीन इंटरफेस हियर देर हैज टू बी ब्रेन मशीन इंटरफेस दैट इज नथिंग बट यू कैन कॉल इट एज अ बी एम आई सो बी एम आई इज नथिंग बट ब्रेन मशीन इंटरफेसेस सो देर आर सो दिस पर्टिकुलर इंटरफेसेस आर अ टाइप ऑफ अ टेक्नोलॉजी दैट अलाउज use of uh, to control a robotic arm prosthetic directly with their brain activity so you are using the brain activity to control robotic directly understanding there is no muscle movement is involved you are directly taking the brain's activity you are recording the brain activity and based on that the robotic arm is working for example in my brain if i think that i want to hold this phone so this particular arm should be able to hold that phone understanding that is why it is called as brain machine interface so the system typically involves electrodes placed on the scalp or are implanted directly into the brain to detect and interpret the user's brain signal so based on the brain's uh, interpretation uh, the signal transaction study what we did, uh, did uh, study so with the rest the help of that so we are just introducing the electrodes on the scalp of the brain or you can just you directly can implant inside the brain so that based on the brain activity whatever brain tells us to do the robotic arm should do ardaita so idralli robotic arms andre brain machine interface anta barutte illi muscle ide yavade involvement iralla nan taleli yen yoshne barutte ade tara movement aagbeku hand idu so ad aagbekandre yen beku electrodes bekagutte adanna illi idbeku brain's activity hege measure martivalla eeg alli ade tara idbeku athwa brain olagade sa nam implant maadabodu adrinda navu ब्रेन ऐन सिग्नल डिटेक्ट मे इंटरप्रेट मे अदे तर पर्टिक्युर रोबोटिक आर्म वर्क आगते ओके सो दिस लुक्स लाइक यू हव गाट द ब्रेन आक्टिविटी सिग्नल अक्विजेशन विल फ्रम द ब्रेन फ्रम द इलेक्ट्रोड्स दैट इज डिजिटल सिग्नल विल कन्वर्टेड अंड देग्नल प्रोसेसिंग विल दे फीचर एक्सट्राशन ट्रांसलेशन अंड आल सो बेस्ड आन दफ्टर द ट्रांसलेशन कमांड विल गिवन टू दि पर्टिक्युर युवर रोबोटिक आर्म सो दट द रोबोटिक आर्म कैन able to hold this okay representation of brain machine interface okay so that will that's it uh, if any doubts are there please let me know next topic you are having engineering solutions for parkinson disease that we will discuss in the next class